Hi and welcome to Coffee with My Sunshine. If you're new here, I would love for you to join my YouTube family and subscribe. Today is my Using Trash to Create Treasure Challenge where I take pieces like this that are actual recyclables or garbage and turn them into treasure. So if you'd like to see what I made, then please keep watching. For the first project that I'm doing, I am taking this cabinet door that I removed from a hutch that I recently did a video on. I will put that up above if you'd like to see that. I did a makeover on it, but I didn't like these doors, as is on the hutch anyway, <laughs> but I thought they would be perfect for this project, so I thought I would paint it, and I'm just using this uh, white chalk paint because honestly that's what I had, so I thought I would use it up. So I just gave the door two coats. And then for the glass, I am using this mirror mirror spray. I've used it before and I love it. It gives it like an antique mirror finish. And all you have to do is just do really light coats. You don't wanna go heavy at all or it just kind of runs and pools in different spots. So that's why I'm um, just going at different angles and I'm, I am letting it dry in between the coats, but I just kind of let it all run together so that it looked kind of cool as it was drying. And you can also, I've done it in videos in the past, um, splash some vinegar on here and then dab it off with a paper towel and it gives it like a mercury glass look. But I actually just wanted it to be kind of like a vintage mirror. So I'm just gonna put it back together and it, it was held on by, by these little plastic, I don't know what they're called, tabs, um, which is fine for now, but I think I might seal it in with some glue so it doesn't fall out. And then I'm just taking the handle that I took off and I'm um, dabbing on some chalkboard paint because it, it kind of has a matte finish. And I normally would have spray painted them matte black, but I was all out. So I'm just using what I had. And so I'm just dabbing it on with a sponge. And then after, after the um, chalkboard paint had dried, I just took some acrylic bronze paint and dabbed it on with the same sponge to give it like a, um, I don't know, like an aged patina look. I don't know if that makes sense, <laughs> but to kind of go with the, um, the metal on the actual window. And here it is all finished. I absolutely love it. I think it's super pretty. I might do the same thing with the other door and hang them in our um, master bedroom because I think they're so pretty. Let me know what you guys think. And before I get too far into this, I wanted to mention again that Leonette from DIY Beauty on Purpose is my co-host this month and this challenge is called Using Trash to Create Treasure if you're new to it and basically all I ask um, people to do that are participating is to take pieces of trash or recyclable items or something somebody else was going to throw away and give them a second life to keep them out of the landfill. Um, it can be turned into anything useful um, a piece of home decor, anything you can think of that just gives it a second life. So after you're done watching my video, head on over to Leon Epps channel and watch her video. And also I will have the playlist listed in my description box so you can watch everybody else's video and get tons of inspiration. And for this next project, I am using this um, older drop cloth that I had and I'm just going to be making pumpkins and these are similar to the ones that I've made with socks before um, but I think they're super fun so all I did was take some bowls that I had in the kitchen just to get the round shape and you want to trace out two of them and then cut them out And then after you cut them both out, I am using this stuff called liquid stitch. I think it is awesome, especially if you're not good at sewing. And then you just want to go around the edge where you would normally put um, a stitch in and you want to leave a little gap. That way you can turn it inside out after it's dried. And this is also where we're going to stuff our pumpkins. 
And this stuff only takes like two hours to dry and it's awesome. I love it. <laughs> and I'm going to do the same thing. I made three pumpkins. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other ones. And here's that gap I was talking about. It doesn't need to be very big. And then once it's dried, you just take that hole and this is where you're going to turn it inside out. Just like this, this is what it looks like after it's inside out or right side in. And you wanna push out all the little, um, little crevices. And here is some more garbage. <laughs> We're just taking some grocery bags and shoving them in there because you know we all have a whole bunch of these that we don't know what to do <laughs> so this is going to act as the stuffing and then for this section that's still open you can sew it shut or here I'm just using the hot glue gun and I'm going to seal it up But see, this one I was showing you, I didn't turn it inside out because I actually liked the rusticness of it where um, it was fraying. So I didn't turn it right side in. I just left it how it was and then, then stuffed it with the grocery bags. And I actually, I think that one's probably my favorite. <laughs> And this is what I was talking about. You just take some twine and wrap it around and tie it. I did a double knot on the underside so that it holds tight. And you can do as many of these as you want. Just give it the little pudgy pumpkin look. And here you just want to cut all the um, excess twine and you can um, cut a piece of fabric to go over that so that it doesn't look so unfinished on the bottom. I wasn't too worried about it because nobody's gonna see the bottom. So for those, you can leave them without stems so that you can stack them on top of each other. And then just do the top one at, with a stem. And I'll show you how I did the stems on these. So you're going to take that last piece of twine and tie it on to the top. I guess it doesn't really matter. You could tie it on the bottom, but I'm tying it on the top. Just the one piece. And then you're going to cut the excess off of one of the strings or one of the pieces. And then you're going to take your stick for the stem and kind of like shove it down in there and you're gonna hot glue it. And this is why you want the extra twine because when you hot glue it, you want kind of a lot so that it holds tight. So the twine is gonna go around the big mess of hot glue <laughs> that you make. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to fall off. <laughs> so then I just started wrapping the twine around the stem. And make sure you're holding it in place until it dries up good. And I think it's so cute. I just love these little pudgy pumpkins. <laughs> And this is what I mean, you can leave it um, so the two don't have stems so that you can stack it. And I think that is adorable. I actually got the inspiration for this from a picture I saw on Pinterest. 
or you can give them all stems kind of in the same way. Um, I'm just using the excess twine that I had cut from uh, making the pumpkins and I just hot glued it on there and then wrapped the twine around there. And then for the little twirly twine pieces that you see sometimes at like the pumpkins at um, Hobby Lobby and stuff, just take some twine and then here, I'll show you in a minute once I get it off of the pencil. <laughs> this one I should have left on a little bit longer, but I just tied it around the stem and I think it's adorable. <laughs> You could even put a little leaf on there, which I might end up doing. Um, but to make that, you just um, take some twine and some Mod Podge or Elmer's glue and coat the twine. Not like so it's sopping wet, just so you know you can feel the glue on there. So coat it and then um, you can go ahead and tie it around the stem now if you want or wrap it around a pencil. And it is kind of sticky and gross feeling, but that's okay. It washes right off. So then you let it dry. You can use a blow dryer here if you want. Um, and then it turns out to be a little curly cue. I think it's so cute. So I'm a sucker for little cloth pumpkins when I see them at stores and stuff. So I have a lot of fun making my own too, because sometimes they can be really expensive. Or is it just me? I don't know. I think they're more expensive than they should be sometimes. But I think these are adorable. Let me know what you think and what you would have done different for yours. For this next one, this is the inspiration piece that I was kind of going off of. I thought they were really pretty. And I kind of saw spaghetti boxes when I saw that picture. So that's what I'm going to use. And I didn't, I'm going to be using the back part because the front part had that little window. And these are the paints I'm going to be using. You want a light gray, a dark gray, and then some metallic -y paints if you have them. And you're gonna start with the lighter gray and give it a good coat. It doesn't have to coat it completely but do the front, back, and bottoms, and sides. And then take your darker gray and a sponge and just kind of dab it on. And you want it kind of uneven. You don't want it to look like super uniform, I guess. because you want to give it a galvanized look. I know you guys have seen this a million times, so I'm not going to get too much into it, but then you take the, um, the darker metallic gray and dab it on as you did the darker gray and just do it in, um, you know, spots. You don't want to coat out the whole thing and maybe do like darker along the edges and the bottom so that it gives it more of a metal-y look. And this is what it looks so far like so far see on that other one I didn't coat it out perfect because the darker gray just covers it and you won't even see it so then after that darker metallic gray has dried just take some of the lighter metallic -y color and dab it kind of sparingly around and that's it super simple and nobody would know that they weren't metal <laughs> unless they go and touch them on your wall but that doesn't usually happen, but I think they're super pretty. Let me know what you think of these Trash to Treasures, and don't forget to check out Leon Epps' channel, DIY Beauty on Purpose. I will have that linked in my description box along with the playlist. Be sure to show them some love and subscribe. I always get so many ideas and so much inspiration from these playlists. Thank you guys so much for watching and all your love and support, and I'll see you next time. Bye!